Okay, so today is day five, and I just want to remind you that on day six is quiz number two, and it's also the last day of the circles unit. So day seven will be the test. So this warm up actually reviews some of the circle theorems. So in number one, it says we have circle all below, but it's not actually below. Um, AB is our diameter. So remember the diameter divides a circle into two arcs that are each 180 degrees. So this is 180 degrees, and this is 180 degrees total. So if this arc right here is 100, or this angle rather, if this angle is 100, this arc is 100 degrees. Therefore, arc CB would be 80 degrees to have a sum of 180. And then if the arc is 80 degrees, then the angle is also to 80 degrees. And this is because the vertex of these angles is right at the center. So these are central angles. So number one, the measure of angle COB, that was the angle we just found if you trace, COB is 80 degrees. Both angles and arcs are measured in terms of degrees. And then arc CB, the arc that's intercepted by the angle, is also 80 degrees. Using the orange to trace from C to B to A. So C, B, A, I'll use yellow. C, B to A is the sum of 80 and 180 is one way to look at that. So 0 plus 0, 0, 8 and 8, 16, carry the 1, 260. Another way to do it is subtract what wasn't highlighted from 360 and we still get 260. So the measure of arc CBA is 260 degrees. Question number two. It says two parallel lines intersect circle O at points A, B, C, and D. So this line, whoops, here is parallel to this line right here. So that means they're the same distance apart, making the arcs that are intercepted or in between these parallel lines congruent. So the measure of arc AB is given and DC is given, find the measure of arc CD. Well, since the arcs are congruent and to find CD we need to know X, I'm gonna set X plus 30 equal to 3x minus 20 and solve for x. So subtracting the x from 3x, we get 2x. Adding the 20 over to 30, we get 50. Divide by 2 and x is 25. Now I go back over to arc CD and substitute 25 in for x. 25 plus 30 is 55 degrees. Just to check, we should get 55 here as well. So 3 times 25, if you have 3 quarters, you have 75 cents. 75 minus 20 is 55, so it does work out. They are the same measure. And then last, we have two chords, A, B, and C, D, that intersect the circle at point E. Remember, as a chord, a chord is a segment that goes from one side of the circle to the other. So A, B, and C, D intersect at this point E. It says that A, E is 12. E to B, I don't know, that's what we're gonna find, so that's X. C, E is eight, and E, D is six. So the theorem that goes with two intersecting chords, or with any two chords, is the segments of one chord, so the 12 and the x, the product of those two, so we multiply 12 times x, that's equal to the product of the segments of the other chord, so that's 8 times 6. 12 times x is 12x, and 8 times 6 is 48. Divide by 12, 
and x is equal to 4. We have to find EB. EB was x, so EB is equal to 4. As we come to the end of this unit, the final exam is so close to this unit test, I want you just to add to that pink study card only those theorems that you have trouble remembering from that green circle theorems study card. Okay, on to the day five notes. And we're looking at more angle relationships. The first is an inscribed angle. So this is different from the central angle. Central angle, the vertex was on the center and its measure was the same as the arc. So if this was 50 degrees, the arc is also 50 degrees because the vertex is at the center. Looking at an inscribed angle, okay, let's look at the picture first. ABC is an inscribed angle. B, since that's in the middle, is the vertex. Let's put a big dot there. The vertex is on the circle. Where for a central angle, the vertex was at the center. Okay, the arc that's intercepted is still between the two rays that form the angle. So AC is the intercepted arc, and it says the measure of an inscribed angle is half. So it's not the same, it's half. So if this arc AC, let's say it was 100 degrees, half of 100 is 50. So that means the angle ABC is 50 degrees. The two theorems that go with that, let's look at the one to the right, an inscribed angle that subtends a semicircle or just means in a semicircle. So if we're looking at this half of the circle, okay, this half right here, we have the inscribed angle, okay. I'm going to grab a different color and follow the rays that form this angle, vertex is on the circle, this here intercepts this arc, which is the other half of the circle, which is 180 degrees. And half of that, that's why we see the box, because that means this angle is 90 degrees. So any inscribed angle in a semicircle is 90. The one to the left, it says if inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles are congruent. So there's more than one in this picture. Let's look at the inscribed angle B, A, D. Okay, that, I'm going to use a hot or color here, green, that intercepts that arc. And then I'm going to look at the angle D, C, B. If you look, at that also intersects the same arc. So say the arc I don't know, is 40 degrees. Half of 40 would be 20. This angle, half of 40, 20, and you can see they're the same measure and therefore congruent. So looking at question number one, it says find the measure for the directions. Find the measure, or find each measure. And the first part is to find the measure of L, M, so in tracing L, M, P, that intercepts this arc. And since the arc is given, it says the measure of that arc is 36. The measure of L, M, P, I'm going to call X. That angle X would be equal to 1 half of 36. Half of 36 is 18. So the measure, I'm going to write the answer up here, the measure of angle LMP is 18 degrees. The measure of arc MN, 
that goes with this angle. Follow it along the ends of that arc. It goes with this angle right here. Okay, which I went over the top. It says this angle is 48 degrees. Well, back up, we should probably add back at the top, okay, that um, addition to the measure of an inscribed angle being half, the measure of the intercepted arc is absolute half double the measure of the inscribed angle. We're going backwards. So the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of the arc, but the arc is double the measure of the inscribed angle. This arc of 100 is double the angle of 50. So we're working backwards. You can pause it if you still are writing. Otherwise, I'm going to move down. So I need to find the measure of MN. I'm going to call it Y. That's going to be double 48. So 48 times 2, Y is equal to 96. So the measure of arc MN is 96 degrees. Number two, so let me set up my answers. We need to find the measure of angle GFJ and the measure of arc FH. So let's start with angle GFJ. So in tracing along, that's this angle here, which I'll call X. Tracing the arc that goes from one end point or one yeah, one end point of the ray to the other is 110. So x is going to be, since it's the angle, half of 110. So x equals 50. And that was the angle GFJ, 50 degrees. Next, I need to find the measure of arc FH. So FH goes from here to here. Following the rays that form the angle would be this and this, and it says the angle is 36. So I'm going to call this Y to show my work. Y is going to be equal to double 36, which is 72. So the measure of arc FH is 72 degrees. On to something different. Uh, number three says find the value of x, and x has been in the expression of angle R, Q, S. The arc that's intercepted is arc SR, and since RS is the diameter, this arc here, RS, is 180 degrees. And because the vertex is on the circle, that means this is 90. So that expression, 5x plus 8, is equal to 90. So subtract the 8 from both sides. 90 minus 8 is 82. Divide 82 by 5. It doesn't go in evenly. It's 16.4. And we found the value of x, so we're done. Last, the measure of fjh. FJH goes along with this arc. And since FJH is 5Z, and I don't know what FH is, I can't say that 5Z is half of something with the vertex being on the circle. So let's look at the other angle that's given in terms of an algebraic expression. And that's HGF. HGF intercepts the same arc. So if they intercept the same arc, they are congruent. So we said their measures equal to each other. 5z equals 4z plus 9. Subtract the 4z. 
and z is equal to 9. All right, now that we know z, we need to find the measure of fjh, and that was the 5z. So substitute 5z would be 5 times 9, which is 45 degrees. So that equals the measure of angle FJH. Last theorem. So if you need to copy down, press pause. On the back, the last theorem says if a tangent and a secant are chord, so it doesn't matter which one, intersects a circle at the point of tangency, then the measure of the angle formed is half the measure of the arc. Well, this is no different than the inscribed angle because if you trace, here's the tangent as it touches once, here's the secant as it touches twice. The vertex is still on the circle and the arc, which is a little bit different is the way it goes, the arc that's intercepted goes from here to here. Okay, so it's still half. So let's write that out. The measure of angle ABC is half the measure of arc AB. So therefore the measure of arc AB is two times the measure of the angle to go backwards. So let's look at number one. We need to find the measure of FGH. So if we trace, FGH is this angle right here. The arc that it intercepts goes from here to here, which is 216. So that means this angle here is going to be half of 216. 216 divided by 2 is 108. The vertex is still on the circle. So it's not really a different theorem. So the answer, the measure of angle F, G, H is 108 degrees. And last one. Find the measure of the arc. So given the angle. So if we trace the angle of 64, that's this angle right here. And the vertex of that angle is on the circle. So the arc goes from here to here, that's L to M, or I went backwards, M to L. So that is double 64, 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 6, 12. So the measure of arc LM is 128 degrees. So with the quiz next class, make sure you do your homework um, fill out your study card, okay, your ping study card for your final exam, and then be sure to see your teacher to get some help after school if you need some more prep for quiz number two.